Hello, friends and fellow students of the Word of God. I'm Brother Jerry, and it's time for another edition of Bible Radio Class. We're in the book of Colossians in chapter 1, and the title for today's program is The Image of God. The Image of God. Let's begin reading in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, where the Word of God says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, that is God, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Of course, the precious blood of Jesus. And verse 15, Who is the image, don't miss it, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now we're going to stay on that verse for a little bit and have some explanation from other scripture. The image of the invisible God. Jesus is called the express image of God in Hebrews chapter 1. Let's read the first three verses. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, verse 2, this is uh, Hebrews 1, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, now watch carefully who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So we see here Jesus is called the express image of God and was in fact the image of God on earth. This verse is so important teaching us a very important truth about Jesus Christ. All right? Now, the fact that you have trusted in Christ, you have a new man inside you that is created after the image of God, of His image, because of Jesus. You see, look in Colossians 3 and verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of Him that created him. See, Jesus is the image of God, and we are created in that image when we trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior. This helps us understand that even though we were born in the image of Adam with a fallen nature and a dead spirit, that we are now a new creature with a new spiritual image with a live spirit, the Holy Spirit inside us, because we are now in Jesus Christ. Look in 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And I want you to notice that this is in the present tense, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. See, a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, this helps to bring us to an understanding about how our souls were saved, having trusted in Christ. You see, the image of God in the original creation was lost in Adam who fell, but restored to us through Christ, the sinless Son of God. We had to, had to be regenerated because we had a fallen nature and a dead spirit. It's kind of the picture would be like of a, oh, a football. You know how a football has three parts. We're going to look at something in a minute about the, human, the makeup of a human being. A football has three parts. It has an outside part, a body, and it has a liner inside of it and then it's filled with air well now if it was flat and didn't have any air in it that would be a picture of an unregenerated man but then when that man is regenerated or saved the holy spirit comes in and fills up the football kind of like that all right there are three parts to every human being we have a body a soul and a spirit just like there were three parts to that football look over in first thessalonians chapter 5 I know that's a very simplistic way to put it, but I believe it helps to illustrate the point. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. That's completely. Sanctify you wholly. And I pray 
God, your whole spirit and soul and body. Do you see those three parts? Be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So every man has three parts to him. Very clear. So that man was originally created this way with all three parts. Let's turn over to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, which states, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So in the original creation before man fell, God created man in his own image. But we know what happened. But let's look at that original creation, some of the details of it, in Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, which says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So you see, there's the body of man. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. There's the spirit. And man became a living soul. Well, there it is, the soul. So we have a body, we have a spirit, and we have a soul. So man was originally created this way with all three parts. We were created this way because God is a triune God. The body of God is Jesus. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. The soul of God is the Father. But as we all know, Adam sinned and lost the image of God. Then men began to be born with a fallen nature in Adam's likeness. Look over in Genesis chapter 5 in the Word of God. The Word of God is the most, the Bible is the most interesting book on the planet, folks. Look in verse 1 of Genesis 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God cre uh, made he him. Verse 2, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Well, then we know the rest of the story where man fell. So verse 3, And Adam lived, this is after he fell in sin, And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And we know that was a fallen image. So it ought to make us more thankful for what the Lord Jesus Christ Christ did in restoring the image of God to our lives through a rebirth. We see why it was so important that Jesus was born of a virgin after the image of God. Look over in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 in our Bible study today. In verse 34, the Bible says, Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? See, she's virgin. She, and the angel just told her that she's going to have a baby. Verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Do you see that? The Son of God. Without a fallen nature. This is Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, who is going to restore the image of God to men and women and children who would trust in Him as their Savior. Now look over at Colossians chapter 1 again. We're back to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15, where the Bible says, and watch it very carefully, very, very carefully, uh, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God. Now, we've got that. We've got that. We know that that is true. He is the express image of God. Then it says, the firstborn of every creature. Now, we have to understand that this is in a line of new creatures because we've read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 that we are new creatures having trusted in Jesus Christ. So that bears a little explanation. Jesus was the firstborn in relation to his physical birth from Mary. He was born sinless. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 29 that he is the firstborn among many brethren. All right? So, in Jesus' case, that birth was physical, but in the case of his brethren, their births are spiritual. 
That's why the Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, you see that? Which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. See, our spirit has been quickened with Christ. It's been made alive. So we are no longer lost and in the fallen uh, image of Adam, but we are in the image of God through the work of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, since Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed that blood, the Holy Spirit now has a legal right to set up residence in our heart upon our conversion. Now let's go back to Colossians chapter 1. All right, and we'll read verse 15 again just for clarity. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now look at verse 16. For by him, that is Jesus, were all things created. See the whole a new creation that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he should have the preeminence. That's exactly what Paul is teaching about here because he has restored the image of God to men that receive him as their Savior. And he says in verse 17, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Even the very atomic structure would not exist were it not for the creative power and the keeping of God. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now watch this. And he, that is Jesus, is the head of the body. Thank God. You see, we are in union with him. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Notice that. The firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So you see, the image of God can be restored in our hearts and lives because of the work of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now how thankful should that make us toward the Lord? And how much should that make us want to worship him even that more, even that much more? My dear friend, he is worthy of, he is worthy of our worship. Look with me in the Word of God in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 10. We see a picture of the church. This is after the church is raptured in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. And it shows 24 elders from amongst that church on the earth. And it says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. You see that worship? And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created, note the word creation, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Now let's finish with Colossians 1 and verse 15. Speaking of Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. This is Brother Jerry. Ask you to remember John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth.